Before we get into our last presentation, we wanted to do one more drawing for our book bundle. And the winner is Marsha Wells of Mercy. Is she here? <laughs> All right, well, we'll roll to the runner-up then, Dick Gregory of Samaritan House. All right. Excellent. Okay. Great. Thanks, Kelly. I hope everyone um, has some delicious snacks in front of them and have enjoyed the knowledge exchange and the day that we've had planned already today. And we just have one more session and then a few closing thoughts from both Ian Morrison and Deborah Levin. Um, but I just, on a show of hands, how many of you have visited the clinic design website that we've been talking about all day today. Okay, so I'm going to just cruise through some of this presentation and then we'll get to the bulk of um, the presentation to highlight the sneak peek of what's ahead. We are launching several new features on the website in the next couple of weeks, so please you know, continue to check back and ensure that you're, you're seeing what's uh, there. So. I'm thinking that this will take me to the PowerPoint. Okay. Okay, so for the f next 45 minutes, we're really just going to concentrate on what the existing features are on the clinic design website that you should not miss, and also what um, features are going to be coming soon. So some of the features that are there, and hopefully you've seen some of the great things that we've put together, is you can learn not only about the design process, but evidence-based design. You have an opportunity to visit the clinics through imagery, the descriptions, uh, specific statistics. You also have the opportunity to visit the solution library, where we have a slew of resources, not only tips from the field or words of advice from your peers, but also uh, examples from presentations that were given. We also have some tools and resources that are there. And then also we've, we've provide a, prov provided a link to the community voice. And so if you're not aware of that particular resource for you, it is a great website and we've had a small partnership with them. So we have a news um, brief and highlights from clinic, community clinic voice. So if I quickly take you through the website um, here, if we're on the home page now, somehow. <laughs> so, gentlemen back there, if you're controlling, okay, perfect. So, um, as you all are aware, since many of you have visited, we've organized the website in, into five different kind of areas to visit. Uh, the About section, which gives you a little summary piece on not only what the foundation has supported, but also what the Center for Health Design is who our advisory council members are and how this work has kind of begun to evolve. Um, addi additionally, you can see the design process. We take you through not only the ideal design process that a clinic typically goes through, but how to weave in the relevant information for evidence-based design. So what are the steps that are, are incorporated and how do you actually begin to think about integrating them within your design process that you're already em embodying? We've also tried to create resources that you can print and hand off to your uh, coworkers and colleagues. So hopefully these resources are useful for you. If, so this is the design process page. The design recommendations page hopefully will grow and evolve as we read through additional research, we visit additional case studies, we hear about the stories that are emerging. But how you can kind of experience this particular page is for an example if you're a clinic designing your space and you're in pre-design you check the box pre-design and then let's say you want to learn about providing any access information or waiting registration information for your patient cycle so this is organized based on the typical cycle that a patient would experience throughout the clinic visit so you can click more or one or more of these and what you'll get is a list of design recommendations that are useful for you to apply at that particular stage in the process, as well as how it's relevant to that particular patient cycle phase. So this will all change and evolve. See these all integrate and change. And you have the oppor opportunity also to um, print the entire list as well. The clinic examples page is really exciting for us because here's your first opportunity to be really interactive with the site. If you log in and create your own profile, you have the capabilities to submit a clinic. So basically you can click the submit a clinic button and it will take you to a form. 
magically to upload information about your clinic, your photos, your spe specific statistics, and then we will do a, some sort of a quality review at the Center for Health, Health Design, ensure that it's up to the standards that we're trying to create within the website, and then um, we'll publish your clinic live. So uh, that's what you'll begin to see here. The clinic examples page is also really exciting and useful because you can search between settings and the scale of the clinic. So I know that many designers in the room and, and clinicians also, when they tend to go benchmark other clinic examples, they really want to see what's the like size to what you're, what you're actually designing. So if I'm designing a 25,000 square foot clinic, I would like to go see a 25,000 square foot clinic to see what they're doing and what are the unique design features that they ha happen to be implementing. You also have the opportunity to search for urban, suburban, or rural, the type of setting. So for an example, if you go to a clinic between 25,000 and 49,000 square feet and it's in a suburban setting, we'll see if we have any clinics available. And yes, we do have one. It's Irving Health Center. So you can click on that. That's in Texas. It's part of Parkland Health System. And then the clinic uh, examples page is organized. You can thumb through the, the pictures. You have the standard features, the type of location, when it opened, the setting, the services that are offered, whether it's a safety net facility or not, the number of exam rooms, and so on. And then you'll have a description based on the input from the clinic's perspective. So what are the built environment features that were incorporated? How's the connection to the community? If there's a patient experience that they want to highlight and so on. So this narrative is really a collaborative effort between the Center for Health Design and the clinics that are publishing their work within the website. So I'll take you to another example that has additional um, examples. If we go and see La Maestra, which we've been referencing quite a bit today, we click on this community health center, which opened just this July. This is actually not in 2011. They opened in July of 2010. Um, but several great images to see their new clinic. But then here on, the, on the, the right corner, you see other clinics that are in the same scale or setting range, which is really critical for a benchmarking perspective. So here is your opportunity to compare and contrast between clinics. What are the design features that they've implemented versus the others? What are the outcomes? What are their stories? What are their lessons learned? So that is, in summary, the clinic examples page. If you go to the solution library page, there's quite a bit of information. So we had the terrific panel discussion earlier today. And here's where you would find the opportunity for you to download the white papers and read at your own leisure, um, as well as the executive summary that you have in your packet today. So when you go home, you can definitely see which paper you'd like to download first and read all of them. As well as Deborah mentioned earlier this morning, we did a literature review back in 2008 that covered a wide variety of ambulatory care settings. And that particular resource is also found here. But um, the, the nice thing about this particular page on the website, too, is you see these two tabs here. It says resources and then words of advice. So the words of advice is, is quite unique um, for clinic design. It's really anecdotal pieces of information from your peers. So, and it's organized based on your design process point, whether or not you're in organizational readiness or whether or not you're in design or in your construction and so on. And it can also be organized based on the patient experience. So access, waiting, reg registration, procedure, and so on. So if we go to, let's say, construction, and we want to say maybe go to procedure. Let's see if there's any. Oh, there's none yet. Um, and... Let's see if there's any in construction. Maybe there's none in construction quite yet. Oh, here we go. So in pre-design, for an example, so what, what this particular portion of the site is geared towards is if you're logged in and you have something you would want to get off your chest, you've got to make sure you're, you to tell your peers that are going through this process after you words of advice, like do not do something or make sure you do this, make sure you sign the contracts, kind of like lessons learned on the fly. Here's your resource. So um, there's quite a bit of lessons learned, and they're all organized in a way that you can try to hopefully find information that you're really looking for at the appropriate time. But please do peruse there 
And then all of these individuals are referenced and quoted, so if you would want to reach out to them and get additional information, we're happy to provide you with their contact information. The resources section, the other tab on words of advice, as I said earlier, is um, just a collection of different types of resources. So you'll have outside links such as Capital Link or Capital Incubator. You'll also have um, journal entries, things that are talking not necessarily just about clinic design, but are talking about facility design and how it could be applicable to your new environment. And again, you can organize and think about looking at um, the various resources based on certain topic areas. So they change based on what you actually uh, select. So those are some of the features that are currently available on the website. They're not only dependent on your involvement, but we hope that this website is useful for you. So you want to come back and add your information, provide us input, make sure that we can change and manipulate the space so it is helpful for you. Um, so with that, I'm going to go back to the web or the PowerPoint because I want to give you a sneak peek at what's kind of coming. My um, another partner of ours at the Center for Health Design, Dr. Larry Malik, is actually on the phone right now, and I don't know, Larry, can you hear me? I can hear you loud. Oh. Thank you. It's magic. Um, so he is in, he's from Western Michigan University and his children are actually on spring break so he couldn't escape the madness at his house. But he has so graciously agreed to join us on the phone and he will provide us a sneak peek with the cost benefit tool that will be live on the website soon. But before we get to Larry, there's just a few other things that we've mentioned throughout the course of the day today that I just want to give you a, a quick snapshot to. Deborah had mentioned earlier the community uh, forum for this, 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 pop, this, this industry, the clinic design community. What this is, is you'll be able to have a login required on the website and it's just going to be somewhat a little bit like the words of advice, but an opportunity to engage with each other. Everyone who is here today either has signed up for the community forum and we'll be launching it next week. So it's going to be exciting. Hopefully we'll populate it with some questions and people will be chiming in with their answers. We're going to be relying heavily on the advisory committee to give some sort of feedback to you. So somewhat like the knowledge exchange, if you can bottle it up and put it online, that's what we're going to try to do next. The other thing that is pretty exciting for us that we've been working on, and it's about a couple months out, but do check back in maybe mid-May, or early June, that will live on the design process page. We've decided to create a, a toolbox of resources, checklists, benchmarking sheets, site visit tools, and so on, organized around the design process. So what are the various components that are necessary for not only your work, but also how to integrate the evidence-based design process within your work. So this, this um, information will be available hopefully in mid-June, so just definitely take a, a, a sneak peek in the next couple of months back on the website. Okay, so I'm going to toss it over to Larry, who's on the phone, and I'll be hopefully steering the ship. <laughs> okay. Very okay, good. Larry, well, it's well all thank you, you Amy. What I will let you know from a technical standpoint is I've got about a one second delay echo on my side. So anything someone says in the middle of me speaking might need to be repeated. So that is a little caveat. I'm going to cover up that part of my receiver and uh, welcome you to this afternoon's presentation. And I've also been not only a presenter today, but I've also been a uh, catching the live stream action as well. So it's been very exciting to listen to the speakers and the panelists. And um, so there we are. You have my PowerPoint presentation. Then we will move over to the um, uh, demo of cost benefit tool here shortly. So uh, as Amy mentioned, I'm Larry Malik. I'm at the Engineering Management Research Lab here at Western Michigan University. I have a fantastic team working with me, web developer of Mohammed Wasif. But and uh, Sakriya Kapadi, and uh, they're really helping to make things go well. So the point is here, in terms of cost benefit, a lot of things you've heard about today are how to design your facilities, your safety net clinic, to be much more effective in serving patients. So essentially what my job is to do 
is to really uh, tell you you get what you pay for. So what are you paying for? Well, with some design decisions, you get more than you pay for. So hopefully uh, we can help guide you with this tool as to how to make intelligent decisions concerning design that you may not have thought about before or you may not have the data to deal with before. So we want to translate a lot of things that we're talking about today into some really nuts and bolts, cost and benefits, things that you can make good decisions with. So next slide, please. Okay. We can help answer some of those questions with data, the types of, of decisions that you can uh, support or things like how can we afford to build a green building, what kinds of positive distractions make sense when patients seek care, how many patient rooms can we have, uh, as we assign FTEs to those rooms, how does it affect our cost structure and our ultimate cost-benefit profile. You know, even things, what's going to cost to light our parking lot? And those new LED lights you hear about, are those worth the cost? So we can provide some models that are really adaptable to your needs that uh, depend on what, no matter what your costs are, even though it's being designed for California's safety net clinics, uh, you should be able to use this and adapt it to almost any situation, certainly in the U.S. And if you can convert your data over to dollars, you can probably do it internationally as well. So uh, next slide, please. I think what's happening here is I have a, about a 30-second delay on my monitor. So I'm just going to move ahead to the next slide, which deals with the cost-benefit tool to help support decisions. And it really it builds on the foundation constructed uh, in the 2008 report the center did for California Healthcare Foundation on clinic design. So we've taken those design recommendations and really translated a set of those into a dynamic web-based tool that will be integrated into the center's uh, clinic website. And Ultimately, what will happen when this gets installed on the center's clinic website is people will register themselves on that site, and then we'll also ultimately have database functions so users could save a project or several projects within that website. And we'll also allow the center and also the foundation to initiate any follow-up contact so with people who have registered and started projects. It would be a good way to get a sneak peek at what people are doing around the country there. So, I think at this point we are ready to, oh, we're going to do the timeline next. There Put that up. I'll just keep on moving it along. How's that? <laughs> so in May uh, of 2010, we began this project by looking at the various uh, aspects of the project in terms of design recommendations. In uh, June and July, we studied current evidence base for tool design ideas. In August, uh, you've heard a lot, of, a lot about La Maestra. I've been there too. And uh, so I went to La Maestra in the City Heights section of San Diego, which was really the inspiration for the first module that we developed a prototype for, and that being the green design module. We also visited Native American Health in the uh, Fruitvale section of Oakland and got some very good ideas there about cultural-based approaches for safety net clinics. In the uh, fall, we began model building then, having that solid basis of clinic visits and evidence base behind us. In January, I hired a web developer. So it's really transformed this project. Uh, originally, we were just talking about building a spreadsheet uh, and maybe getting something on the web as a trial. Now we're going all web because that really is the tool for us to be able to design effectively on and also provide instant dissemination of the tool. Uh, past February, we tested the green prototype with uh, members from the center and also members of the advisory council for this project got a lot of good feedback, and then incorporated that feedback into a new version of the tool, which is up there on a sort of testing basis on our servers here at the College of Engineering at Western Michigan University. And then lately, we are working on the next module, which is patient care areas, and the other two modules, which I'll show you, at least I'll show you the, the icons for them here shortly. And it's, uh, by the end of May, we hope to release the cost-benefit tool in its initial release, and then uh, follow that up with a database function so people can save their particular uh, project. So I think now what we're going to do is we're going to take my screen and I will make it live and I'll wait until someone tells me that they see it. Okay, so for the technology people back there, hopefully okay. you're figuring that out. Do you see the screen? We do see the screen. You do, okay. Now one thing I wanted to make sure to do is uh, I can see many of you people. You can't see me, so at least I found a photo. I'm sorry I can't be there today. 
but I'm actually in my office. So just just uh, in case you haven't met me before, that's what I look like. This is the. Well, that, um, we, didn't, we didn't quite see the picture, Larry, but that's okay. <laughs> you didn't see it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Kelly 2 has arrived. Okay, we are now live. Okay, very good. All right, you, you didn't see my photo, so I'm going to put it back up because I've seen you all, not all of you, but uh, the folks I've been working with. And um, just for a little facial recognition, <laughs> I, uh, like I said, sorry I can't be with you today. This actually <laughs> was taken in uh, Colorado, and, uh, but I'm here in my office in Kalamazoo, Michigan on a cold but sunny day. So this is the screen, the Safety Net Clinic. It's running off our servers up here, as you can see. And uh, we log in, and we have My SNC, which is My Safety Net Clinic. And you can see we got four icons or pictures here for the four modules that will be developed. Green Design is the first one. As I mentioned, we were inspired by the, the visit at La Maestra when Zara mentioned that uh, green didn't really cost her much more. I was really intrigued as an engineer that, wow, you can really design something that's better for our environment and is better for your bottom line. So she mentioned that she got a lot of her economics from discounts from vendors. As we went and investigated further, as many of you know, when you design to lead certification and lead levels, you save a lot in a number of areas, particularly energy and water are the most tangible. So we took this uh, design, and when you first click on it, you get an overview, which tells you a little bit about what I've told you, what sort of decisions does it support. And this tool is designed to support preliminary design decisions. So when you think about, I want to design a safety net clinic, or any clinic for that matter, uh, what sort of decisions can we make? and use this tool for. Can we afford to seek lead certification for this facility uh, and save dollars? How much can we save on energy costs if we go green? And these sorts of things. So we'll continue on to just give you a sneak peek, as Amy called, into the green building and green design module. Uh, what you see here is there's a discount rate. That's really kind of your cost of capital or cost of money. We threw it in at 6%. But as you see, you can change that, and everything will update. I'll show you that here in just a moment. I'm going to leave it at six. And your benefits are things like energy, water. Uh, these will increase based on a, a certain inflation rate you put in your cost. For, your, for example, your building cost, not necessarily your building cost, but your electricity and energy costs, how fast do they go up each year. Your construction costs, some of you may say, well, 200 bucks isn't, that's not what we're paying. We're paying more like 325. Well, fine. So you can see the numbers went up down here already. Uh, under the cost, Essentially, one of the feedbacks we got from uh, demoing this tool is that you shouldn't be able to get all the benefits if you don't put the money in, in the cost side. So if we back down our cost by a factor, our first cost of green, we have 120000 We just make it 12000 You see all these selections went away. You can't pick these benefits unless you pony up the money. So we have several cutoff points put into place that will allow you to select various options and you can see the, the key metric we're using here is net present value. And you'll also see that there are rollovers that explain what's happening on those and describe those particular things, okay, those particular terms. I'm going to go ahead here and click energy is something that we're going to select, water, indoor, that we're going to save by use of designing our facility to be green. Now, if you're saying, well, we can't afford lead, well, we go over here on lead and we get a rollover. You click that. That's going to take you to the current certification fees, all that's updated. You can take those data, pop it back in here into this field if it's different from what we pre-filled it as, and you'll be able to move ahead with the model. Okay, so what does this do for you? You look at the model, and you choose your term. We've defaulted 20 years because that's how long typically uh, the literature and the architects and practice are telling us that you can keep a facility uh, before he needs to be significantly reprogrammed for other purposes. So down below here, we have an MPV chart. So just for kicks, I'll show you some things here. If we back down to 10 years, it will dynamically redraw. So this entire set of modules is dynamic. You change one number, and everything else will change to adjust to that. So you want to write 
send this as a report, you want to print this thing, there you go. I'm going to you know, cancel out of that, but that puts it in format that you can print easily. You hang on a second, it goes back. So, well, I really need to put this in another report. Well, tell me what file type you want. So you can copy that and put that into your Excel spreadsheet, into your report to the boss, into your venture capitalists or investors or uh, donors who want to see things. If you want to see the data, they're all down here. Each year, initial investment, years one through 20. Benefits, cost, net benefits. We've run, done the numbers for you for net present value. Let's say you want that in Excel, you click the button, and away you go in an XLS format. So it's right there. So this is one of the modules, and there's, you're trying to, maybe you're trying to figure out, well, what do all these things mean? And so we put the assumptions in here that it's operating on. Since it's designed for safety net clinics in California, we're using the current uh, weighted average of 16.8 cents per kilowatt hour. You can adjust that. We put the assumptions behind the 30% savings on electricity listed here. And if you want need to adjust that, we've given you the details on how to basically use ratio analysis to uh, adjust those particular pieces. The indoor water assumption usage based on $280 per acre foot of water. Again, all the assumptions related to that. Uh, the point today is a sneak peek. If you want a longer uh, tutorial on this, Join us in Nashville. Well, I will be there in person at Healthcare Design 11 in November, and we have a one-hour educational tutorial that we'll present. Uh, both Mohammed, the web developer, and myself will be there 